Creating relationships is a two-step process, and we did the first step in the previous training video. So you want to watch it, or this one's going to be very confusing to you. And as you recall, we created a foreign key, which is a copy of the primary key field, like I did in the employees table, and added it to the computers, because I want to keep track of all the computers that are assigned to each employee. So for example, when you open up the employees table, what I did is I basically replicated the primary key field, didn't copy over the primary key, just replicated that field, which includes the name in the field, employee ID, and the type of data stored in that field or the data type. And I went to the computers table and added that as the last field in that table, employee ID. And you can see here we have a total of 24 employees who have computers assigned to them, as opposed to, well, we got more employees than we do computers at this point. But in any case, once you have these two set up here, there's a place you can go to and access where you can hook up these tables together, link them or relate them. And again, why do you want to link them up? So if I want to pull up the last name of an employee or their first name and last name, like Homer Simpson, and also the asset tag or barcode that's assigned to Homer, I don't have to pull up both tables and include all these fields and then toggle back and forth between the two. Instead, I can do a query, one view, that allows me to pull in the fields that I want to see from both tables once they're related or linked. So I could say, okay, from the computers table, just show the asset tag, and then from the employees, give me the first and last name. Makes it a lot more efficient than me coming in here and pulling up both tables. Now, in addition, let me close out of these tables. When all is said and done, my tables are all going to relate to each other either directly or indirectly. What I don't recommend doing is linking one table to all the other tables. For example, with my database here, I've got the computers linked to the employees. And computers are also linked to the manufacturers. I'm not going to link the employees to the manufacturers because it's got nothing to do with computers, at least directly. So if I want to pull up an employee and the manufacturer that produced the computer for that employee, or the computer that's assigned to the manufacturer name, because the computers is linked to the employees, and also the manufacturers, I got an indirect link through the computers from employees to the manufacturers. That can pull up all that information in a query instead of me opening up all three tables and trying to figure out, okay, first off, we got the employees. Let me get the employee ID to go over to the tables, look up the ID to find the manufacturer, the ID to that that's assigned to that computer, to go to the manufacturer's table to open that up and go, okay, it's number three. Oh, it's Macron who manufactured the computer for that employee. And then the departments is directly linked to the employees. And so if I want to find out how many computers are in each department, I don't have to pull up the employees because computers is linked to the employees and indirectly through employees to the departments. I've seen a few databases where somebody had one table and had a dozen other tables all linked up to that one table. It didn't seem very efficient to me. In any case, again, there's a place you can go to an access where you can link the primary key field in one table to its duplicate field or foreign key field in another table, where it has the same name as the primary key and has the same type of data or data type. And that's found up here. Go to the Database Tools tab to the Relationships group and click on Relationships, and now you're in the Relationships window. And metaphorically speaking, I call this the dance floor. In other words, when you have people on the dance floor here, they're going to look at each other and try to find something in common or something that they like about them. And then you start creating those relationships or hooking up or linking up. So how do we get these tables, or metaphorically speaking, these people onto the dance floor so we can see what they got in common or what they're going to be able to relate to? Being able to see their primary key and foreign key fields and being able to link them up. You can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either come up here on the Design tab to the Relationships group and click on, there you go, Show Table, shows you the tables, or Close Out. You can right-click over here on the Dance Floor, and there you go, Show Table, same window. And to be able to add tables to the Dance Floor, as it were, you can either go ahead and double-click and it adds it, or if you want to select more than one, hold down the Shift key and click, and it selects everything, well, from the first selection down to the click, when holding the Shift key, that is. Or if it's nonlinear, like you want to do computers and maybe employees, hold down the control key and click on employees and we'll control click manufacturers. But let me go ahead and go back to computers, hold down the shift key and select down to manufacturers and then click add. When we're done adding them, just go ahead and close out. Now I added the same table twice, computers, 
there's the original name, then there's the original name plus one, as it were. And so to get rid of this copy, this doppelganger, you can either right click on the title bar to hide the table, or you can click on the title bar and hit the delete key and it hides it. It doesn't delete the computer's table over here, it just hides the table, the extra table that we added over here in the relationships window. Now we have all these people on the dance floor, as it were, and we want to find out what they have in common. Now see if this makes sense the way I set it up. Let me go ahead and click and drag the title bar for manufacturers so I can move that table and come over here and click and drag the employees so we can get up close and personable to the computers because why? Well, they got something in common. What's that? The employee ID, the primary key, and there's the key for primary, and the foreign key field over in the computer's table. Now, by the way, if you can't see all the fields within the table because it's crunched, you can hover over one of the borders until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions, and then click and drag to stretch it horizontally or the bottom border more vertically. Of course, if you crunch it, you'll have to scroll, but I don't want to scroll, so let me stretch it open till I can see all the fields. And then looking at the names, doesn't it make sense to have the same name as the primary key field here? Because, I mean, voila, you can spot it right off the bat. That one goes to that one. You can name it whatever you want. You can call it Scooby-Doo. It doesn't care. It'll link it up as long as you have the same data type and also the same data. So, again, it's easier for me to spot it when I'm hooking up one table to the next to go, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember the employee ID goes to the primary key employee ID field here. So anytime I add a new computer here, I have to pull an ID if I want to assign this to an employee from the employee's table. And so if I have 48 IDs over here, 1 through 48, and I add a new computer and I want to assign it to employee 49, and again, I just have a total of 48, when I link them up, relate these two fields together, this table over here is going to say, what are you doing? I don't have employee ID 49, and so you won't be able to save the record. You can only enter in an ID that's available in the employee's table. So there's data integrity there, and I'm not adding extra employees that shouldn't be assigned a computer when we don't really have an employee over here in the employee's table. Okay, so we've got something in common here. Remember, foreign key to the primary key field, they both have the same data, same data type. So let's go ahead and link them up. To do that, in this training video, we're talking about relationships. This is a one-to-many relationship. You can link primary key to foreign key or foreign key to primary key. It doesn't matter. So to link them up, you can go ahead and click on one and drag it over on top of the next. So I can do it, well, foreign to primary or again, primary to foreign. So let's go ahead and do it. Click and hold down the mouse button on the foreign employee ID and start dragging it up and you can see it's moving it. But you have a circle with the line through it saying, well, you can't dump it back into its own table. And when you go over to the dance floor, it's like it doesn't want to fall down on the dance floor, get embarrassed. But when you go into the other table, it goes, ah, you can see you got the pointer with the plus sign below it, meaning that it's adding it over, copying it, because it's not really moving it. It's just making a copy of it to put right on top of the key field that we want to hook up and link to the employee ID. Let go and voila, we got the edit relationships window. And down below it says that the employee ID is coming from the employees table to hook up to the employee ID in the computers table. Now we can go ahead and just create the relationship right here, but if I do that without enforcing referential integrity, that means, as I just discussed, let me click and drag the title bar down so we can see up here, that if I add a lot of computers and I start adding an employee ID that's not found in the employee's database, well, it'll allow me to do that because it's not being enforced. So I could type in here employee ID number 50, even though I only have 1 through 48, and it will save it as 50. So later on when we do an audit and we're like, hey, we gave a computer or assigned it to employee ID 50. We have no 50 in here. It only goes from 1 to 48. Oh, somebody's cooking the books. They're making up employees here. Well, with referential integrity, it would lock that down because if it's not in here and you try to type it in here or enter the ID here, again, it'll block it. And to prevent accidental errors, you can go ahead and have a lookup field that when you click in the employee ID foreign key field, it'll pull in all the employees there, their corresponding numbers you can assign to. Or you can do a query that just pulls up the employees and so you can get the right employee. 
In any case, access is a process. We'll learn about that in a later training video. Right now we're just trying to hook up and make sure it's done right. Now there may be a time where you may not want to enforce referential integrity. For example, let's say we've got a notes table and we're going to have notes on some of the computers, not all the computers. So we relate them. I don't want to be able to enforce it, meaning that I have to have a note for every computer because maybe the notes are just about, okay, this one's out of warranty. This one we need to do a checkup on. I don't want to type in something that just for the sake of trying to take care of referential integrity. So that might be one example where you don't enforce it, where you don't have to have a note for every single computer if you have a separate table for notes for the computers. And so the definition of enforcing referential integrity is that it prevents the user entering in a value that doesn't exist in the related table and accidental deletion or changes that would invalidate the relationship between the tables. Now I don't know about you, but just checking the box to enforce doesn't help me because when it comes to these fields and records, I update them all the time. Like maybe an employee quits or gets fired, I want to be able to remove that employee from the table. So just enforcing it doesn't allow me to delete the employee record because it's going to be tied to the employee ID for the computer that they're assigned to. And so in order to update related fields and delete related records, that's right, you see it down below, update related fields, delete related records, you want to go ahead and check the cascading options. But keep in mind that when you do delete an employee, that it will also delete the corresponding computer that they're assigned to. And why would it do that? Well, if I come over here and I delete employee number 48, number 48 is still there. And so since it's no longer available over here, you see that creates integrity issues. And with it being enforced, it says to keep everything the same or balanced so we're not missing something over here. And then we're going to go ahead and delete the related computer to that employee. And so if you want to assign that computer to another employee, you don't want to delete that employee, but think of other ways or avenues to add a new employee first and then reassign that computer to the new employee before you delete the old employee. Or you can create a field that the employee's been fired or is no longer working with us. That way we still have their information without deleting it and deleting the corresponding computer that they're assigned to before we assign it to somebody else. Or just simply come over here in the computers table and remove that employee from that computer, leave it blank. That works, so that computer's not assigned to that employee. And then before we go ahead and click create, notice at the bottom, the relationship type, it's one to many, as opposed to the other type being one to one. And we'll talk about one to one in the next training video, but let's go ahead and click on create. And there's the link from the employee ID to the employee ID, the primary key. And so what I add over here, as long as it's over here in this table first, the employee ID, it'll be assigned that employee to a computer here. And so it's kind of squished here, this link. Let's go ahead and click and drag it down here and stretch it out so it looks like that. And if that gets in the way, I'll click and drag those out. Of, click and drag those out of the way. So there's the one, meaning that you can only have one unique record, employee ID, one employee in the employees table. That's Bob Smith. And so there's the one. That means the employee ID has got to be unique. No duplicates. So if the employee ID was their social security number, we want to make sure we don't have that duplicated. Otherwise, we might be hiring somebody who stole the social security number from somebody else. In any case, there you go. As opposed to the infinity symbol, which is the many, meaning that you can have one employee that has, well, many employee IDs over here, meaning that they can be assigned to many computers. Maybe one's a desktop, another one's a laptop or a tablet. Now, if you made a mistake and you didn't mean to relate, well, this field to that field, you can, of course, go ahead and right-click on that thin, skinny line and select Edit Relationship. And then you can go ahead and make the changes and say, okay, from the employees table, I didn't want it to be the employee ID, but I wanted it to be, well, maybe that field. So you can click on the drop-down arrow and choose another field to relate it to the other field if you made a mistake there. Make your changes. Go ahead and update it. Click Okie Dokie. I'm going to click Cancel or... As you saw, when you click on that skeevy little line, you can also delete it. Are you sure? Yes, and it's gone. And now to bring it back again, you're just clicking and dragging. And it doesn't matter when it's a one-to-many relationship type, or you can have only one here, to many over here in the other table, that you click and drag from left to right, in this case, or right to left, from foreign key to primary key. So, you know, just click and drag and dump it right on top of it and force and we're back to where we started fabulous 
Now let's go ahead and look at all the other relationships that we can create between these tables. They're kind of standing off by themselves, all shy and such. But you can see I've got the foreign key, department code. That's why I put it at the end. When I look at the end, I'm basically trying to match it up with one of these tables that, ah, there we go. I know it was obvious, but I wanted to show you that I can look around, especially if I had a bunch of tables in here and I took over somebody else's database. If they design it the way I did, I can just look at the bottom of any one of these tables and see if there's a duplicate name with that being the primary key in another table. And there you go, department code. So great. Go ahead and click and drag from one to the other and let's enforce and do the cascading to update and delete related records. Click create. And then let's see, manufacture the foreign key. And since I don't have it as a primary key, I do have the foreign key manufacture ID that can go to the primary key right there. And even though that's not the last one, that's okay. I guess I could have moved the manufacturer ID down to the bottom so I could keep the foreign key fields at the bottom, but it doesn't matter. It's how you want to organize it, but you can still do it. It doesn't have to be at the bottom of the table. So there we go, manufacturer ID to the primary key in the other table, enforce, and click create, and there we go. Okay, it looks like a mess. Let's go ahead and clean it up. We can move this guy down and click and drag the tunnel bar him. Oh, let's do it straight. Let's see if we can go ahead and line it just perfectly. Oh, that's nice. And then you come over here. Okay, and then you come down here. Now, all these tables are either directly related to each other or indirectly. Like the manufacturers to the departments, I can eventually talk to them through these others here. I got these codependent relationships that, well, I talk to him and say, okay, what do we have in common? The manufacturers right there. And from that, I can access his information and say, okay, from you, how do I get to this person? Well, it's through the employee ID. And then when I access that, then it will relate to the department code. So long story short, I can do a query that I just need to pull up the manufacturer name and the department name to find out which manufacturers assigned to which department. Maybe we have five departments and four out of the five have the same manufacturer. So maybe that's the popular one that we go with because they like that particular manufacturer. And then when you're done with your layout, just go ahead and click close. And it says it wants to save the changes to the layout. Okay, yes. Closes out. Then to go back to it, click on database tools, relationships, relationships, move it around or click and drag and stretch it. And then go ahead and click save. So when you close out and of course you go back to it again, it remembers where you moved it and the resizing of those tables. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.